नमो तसा भगवत अर्हत सुंगूत्र निकाय बुक ऑफ टेन टू हंड्रेड एंड सिक्सटीन Uh, the name uh, has translated is creeping. Uh, we can say crawling also. Uh, in Hindi we say rengna. Uh, so it is like uh, any animal or any uh, being which uh, which will be uh, kind of slithering on the uh, ground. So that is the uh, feeling which they have to give. So now the Buddha is trying to kind of give a uh, feeling of. what is it that is creeping uh, creeping uh, one of the things uh, animals mentioned is owl owl is mentioned because whenever it sees somebody in the night it will go away it will run away it is not uh, there uh, and confronting uh, uh, the humans or other animals so that is also one uh, idea which uh, the buddha is uh, conveying but it, uh, basic overall idea is how your actions Uh, will lead to the results which are there in the later part so that is the central theme the kamma is the central theme but uh, he is kind of giving this uh, uh, theme of creeping to give you a, a idea of what is it that is a bad destination uh, to uh, certain times you need uh, negative incentives uh, when you are in corporate uh, they say that you also have to have negative incentives so uh, certain times uh, positive incentives work certain times negative so the buddha is using negative incentive over here to kind of encourage you students i will teach you an exposition of the dhamma on creeping listen and attend closely i will speak yes bante uh, those uh, students replied the blessed one said this and what students is the exposition of the dhamma on creeping students there are beings are the owners of their kamma so that means that you are owning your actions kamma is action so uh, how does the kamma happen uh, for kamma to happen there should be an intention and based on the intention there is an action and based on that action there is a result so that is the kamma so your intention is very important in kamma but you own your kamma so that is the one uh, basic point is beings are owners of their karma and they are the heirs of their karma who are the heirs say your father or uh, mother has a lot of property and uh, they pass away and uh, you will become the heir so you will own those things which are there but uh, the buddha is saying that whatever action you are doing which you have done in the past also you are the heirs so what action you have done in the past Uh, let us say in the past life you have done some action you don't even remember that but you will own that in this present life so you are the heirs of your karma they have karma as their origin why is their karma as their origin because the being born is born because of karma so one idea uh, which uh, i would like to say is say if in the past life i was a or somebody was a arahant then you they would not have this life i am here because there are certain kammas which i had done which made me uh, a human being if i had another kamma then maybe i was born as a deva if i had another kamma i was born as an animal if i had another kamma i was born in some other destination so this is how uh, i am the origin which is that is based on my action itself so nobody else is responsible for my current state of being so uh, they are born of the origin of the uh, thing is also through kamma kamma as the relative kamma as the relative means that the uh, action which you are done is based on whatever uh, you are related to so uh, uh, buddha one give, once gives a uh, uh, abda, update on the how anybody you meet in your life will be your relative in certain lives in the past so it is very difficult to meet somebody who was not a relative in the past so that is the long period of uh, life which we have lived in various uh, beings or in the various times and that is the reason our actions is responsible for our relative also so the 
the comma is our relative. Comma as their resort. So what is the resort means that how do you change your present position? You change your present position with your actions. Say if your uh, poor person wants to become rich, then uh, they will do work, hard work. They will uh, see what are the things uh, needed to uh, get, gain wealth and they will do the actions. So that actions will gain them wealth. If you are already wealthy and said, I want to preserve my wealth, I want to uh, uh, do something which is uh, there, which is good, then they may do charity, they may do uh, dana. So kamma is their resort. Uh, whatever kamma they do, good or bad, they are their heirs. So again, whatever kamma I do currently in my present life will become my uh, responsibility in the coming. Unless and until you do the kamma of becoming an arahant or an anagami, which is possible because we have the knowledge and we have the teaching of the Buddha. And by using the teaching of the Buddha, we can still progress. Here someone destroys life. He is murderous, bloody-handed, given to blows and violence, merciless to living beings. He creeps along by body, speech and mind. So, you will see that there is a theme of uh, precepts also over here and uh, there are certain uh, actions which are there which are uh, good to do uh, and certain actions which are there uh, which uh, would be encouraged. So uh, over here the first uh, precepts is mentioned the precepts of killing not to kill. So uh, Buddha is giving an example of a, per a person who is uh, destroying life. So then he creeps along by body, speech and mind. His bodily kamma is crooked. So his uh, the actions which he is doing by body is crooked, he says. So the crooked word is used uh, in many places in uh, Indian languages uh, also. Uh, in English also you say that he is not straight. So he, this guy is crooked. So it means that the person is not doing the correct thing. So that is how the crooked uh, is there. I know in Marathi there is a word which is called vakra. Uh, so they uh, certain times to do, uh, say, uh, if you say this one word, we know that this guy is not uh, correct. He is not a straight person. So the, the, in many languages in India uh, uh, or in English also, uh, straight means okay uh, and the crooked means a person who is not doing an action which is uh, right. So that is uh, what the Buddha is trying to convey. His bodily kamma is crooked. His verbal kamma is crooked. His mental kamma is crooked. His destination is crooked. His rebirth is crooked. So while his actions are crooked, his destination means the next life which he will uh, gain. Or in this life also you see that the person is a criminal and he ends up in a jail or in a very bad place. So now you see that uh, what uh, karma he is doing as crooked, he will uh, go to the crooked destination. His rebirth is crooked. But for one with a crooked uh, destination and rebirth, I say there are one of two destinations. So the Buddha is give, uh, giving an idea of the crooked destination also. The crooked destination is either the exclusively painful hells or the species of creeping animals. So the Buddha says they will be born as animals, but animals also specifically is the creeping animals. And if he is going to hell, it is especially uh, painful. And what are the species of creeping animals? The snake, the scorpion, the centipede, the mongoose, the cat, the mouse, and the owl, or any other animals that creep away when they see people. So when they see people, they run away. So those are the animals you will be reborn in. I don't think uh, other than uh, the cat, uh, any of the uh, other uh, are very popular as pets also. <laughs> but I think uh, cats uh, are uh, very popular pets. But one thing I'll tell you about uh, Kamma is in one other sutta, in, I think Majjhima the Buddha is giving an idea about if you are breaking the precepts, but you are doing good dana in your life, still you will be, if you are born as an animal, you will be born in an animal which is called uh, royal, 
like a royal horse. Uh, Buddha gives an example as a royal horse. If uh, he is born as an animal, but he is in a, a palace, he is taken care of. Uh, there is a uh, rubbing which is given to him, the food is given, water is given, exercise is given to him. But uh, he is born as an animal, but because the kamma, the good uh, things will come up and help him, even in this case. Uh, case. In today's time, you can see that uh, people uh, take care of their dogs and uh, cats more uh, than, uh, and they spend more than they would have spent on a baby. They say that uh, before we get a baby, we'll get a cat. And we'll see uh, and uh, uh, care for it as, as a uh, baby and then see if you want a real baby. So that is how uh, Kamma also comes in uh, effect. Thus, a being is reborn. From a being, one is reborn through one's deeds. When one has been reborn, contacts affect one. It is in this way, I say, that beings are the heirs of their karma. So that is what the Buddha is saying that because you have done karma, based on this you are born and because you are born, the context will affect. So the context will affect in different places in different manner. Say so like uh, for a human being, there are different contacts which are there. For a deva, there are different contacts which are there. So the Buddha says that it is very difficult to uh, ascertain the pleasure one can feel as a deva. Uh, compared to a human being. So the Buddha compares uh, the pleasure of a uh, wheel uh, bonk, uh, sorry, uh, a king, wheel uh, turning king. A wheel turning king is a king who becomes the king of the whole of the planet without having a uh, fight. He has an army, but he uh, never has uh, uh, anybody killed in battle. So he becomes uh, the wheel turning monarch. And based on that, he has a lot of uh, wealth and uh, he has a lot of different kind of pleasurable situations. So he says that if that is a wheel turning monarch, what is the highest as a human being pleasurable uh, situation you can be is like a rock. Then a tree deva uh, is like the uh, uh, Himalaya. Uh, the uh, the uh, the mountain of Himalaya. So that much uh, pleasure uh, a pre-dwelling uh, pre deva will get uh, compared to a wheel-turning monarch. If the wheel-turning monarch is getting the pleasure as as much as a rock, then the deva will get as uh, as much pleasure as the Himalaya. So the Buddha is giving a contrast about how pleasurable the uh, different kind of uh, states of being can be. So like a tree deving deva is there, then there is a, I think, uh, four great kings, Chatu Maharajika deva, then there is uh, Tavatimsa deva log. So there are more progressive uh, deva logs are there till we go into Brahma Loka. Brahma Loka also there are many levels in the Brahma Loka. So uh, the, uh, the Buddha is giving uh, uh, all those details in other suttas. So but over here we just need to know that one is reborn and one when it is reborn has context. Now this context, uh, the pleasure and pain is based on where you are born. The pleasure and pain which is there for a human being is different. But say if he is born as a, uh, a hungry host, then his uh, pain level is a lot. Uh, if he is born as an animal, his pain level is different level. If he is uh, born as a, uh, in the hell, then his pain and uh, the suffering which uh, the being uh, experiences uh, in it at a different level. And in, in the hell realm also, there are many different kinds of hell realm. So that is uh, what the Buddha is saying, that once you are born, you are affected by contact. Someone takes what is not given. So someone is uh, stealing, engages in sexual misconduct. Now, uh, the Buddha is giving the four uh, part of the speech, which is there. So we have uh, covered the three uh, uh, kind of uh, precepts and this is the fourth precepts in four parts. So one is speaks falsehood. So that is uh, speaking lies. Speaks devi divisively. Divisively speaking means that uh, if you go to one group and say something about another group and then go to the another group and say something about this group and then uh, because of that, they, those group fight. So they are divided. Uh, and that is a, a speech uh, the Buddha is saying one should not do. One speaks harshly. Harshly means the person may uh, use abusive language 
or uh, maybe uh, uh, use uh, temper uh, language like uh, be in, in angry and they they speak like that indulge is ideal chatter ideal chatter is also prattle uh, they say that uh, speaking uh, which is not relevant uh, speaking this and that uh, of uh, the Buddha is giving for monks, at least the Buddha gives a long list of things, speaking about wars, speaking about princes, speaking about uh, uh, the environment, speaking about the furniture, speaking about many, many things. The Buddha is giving a list of things, whereas the Buddha says the monks should not uh, speak. So maybe not all of them are prohibited for uh, lay people. But uh, basically, uh, the understanding is that what is not relevant uh, to us, uh, one speaks about that. So that is the ideal chatter. He is full of longing. So now one is, it is inter interesting that Buddha is giving now the precepts over here. And in these precepts, uh, after the four precepts, he is not mentioning the precept of alcohol. So it's an interesting fact over here in this sutta. And one other interesting fact is that uh, the Buddha is mentioning about the creation of the Tavatimsa Deva Lok. Tavatimsa means 33. Uh, the Deva's uh, Loka of 33. So uh, now, uh, how did this come about? The Buddha gives an example of that there is a non-Buddha era where the Buddha's teaching is not there. There is a village where 33 friends are there. They from, form a group. They form a group and say that we will live a life of uh, piousness. And what they do is they decide to follow the four precepts because when the Buddha is not there, then the four precepts are there. The Buddha understands the importance of the fifth precepts. So what they do is they say that I will, uh, they get together and say that we will not kill, we will not steal, we will not have sexual misconduct, we will not have uh, the false speech, the four parts of the false speech. So they say that we will live in this manner. So when they live in this manner, they gain a lot of merit. When they gain a lot of merit, when it, it comes for a time for them passing away, there is no other Deva Loka which can accommodate them. So and then this 33 friends become the first residents of a Deva Loka, which is made specifically for them. And that is the reason that uh, Deva Loka's name is the Deva Loka of the 33. So they are based on the 33 first residents of that Deva Loka. <laughs> because uh, uh, in that time, there was no precepts of uh, alcohol. The alcohol precept was not mentioned. But the Buddha, when he comes, why he is giving the precepts of alcohol to the lay people and to the uh, monks also? Because uh, of this example also the Buddha is giving in the Vinaya. So what happens is there is a monk who comes to a town. The, uh, the town people say that there is a uh, Naga, which is there, which is harassing us, which is very similar to the Indian story of uh, Krishna going into the lake and uh, uh, over uh, powering the uh, Naga over there in the lake. So it's a very similar story. So uh, they, uh, the monk goes there, uh, over uh, comes the Naga, uh, stands on its head uh, and uh, uh, kind of subdues the Naga. So the townspeople are very happy. The Naga says, I will not harass the townspeople. Now, so now then uh, he's asked, uh, what do you like? So he likes a drink, which is there, which is a fermented drink. Fermented drink uh, has a property of some alcohol being there in the fermented drink. So he goes around uh, to every house uh, next morning for the arms round. So everybody gives them a, him a small cup of this fermented drink, which is uh, like uh, the consistency of a beer maybe, uh, the alcohol content maybe of the beer. So it was uh, considered normal. Uh, uh, there is one other uh, story about uh, beer where uh, it is said that it may be the, one of the first drinks of uh, made by humanity, uh, which is uh, the uh, uh, not uh, naturally available. Fermented drink were the first uh, drinks which uh, came into being. And it was very good because it uh, had a property of uh, preservation. So you can preserve, uh, make that in a uh, time of say harvest and preserve it in the time when you need it. Uh, maybe in winter where there is uh, less food or in summer uh, when there is no rain uh, and you have to have some uh, 
thing to consume. When you consume, they have calories in it, and that is a good thing. So, anyways, they, this must be the fermented drink which was there. So, uh, the monk is drinking this fermented drink the whole day, and by the time he comes to the Buddha in the evening, uh, he becomes very intoxicated. And then he does not know where the Buddha is and where to uh, bow down. And then the Buddha says that this uh, mighty monk yesterday was fighting the Naga and now does not know the which direction he should bow down to. So uh, he then uh, gives the precepts of uh, not to or the Vinaya rule of not to drink. So the, uh, the uh, point of this matter is that when you drink, uh, you uh, lose your senses and you break the other precepts. So there is a, a very good uh, uh, story I tell about. It's in uh, uh, the story is from the uh, kind of Gulf uh, region, uh, from the Islamic region, uh, which says that how a person who is uh, very loyal to his wife, uh, he is uh, very kind of kind to his uh, servant, uh, and does not drink. Uh, the devil wants to uh, control him, so he gives him the offer of uh, the kingdom, but uh, he has to. Uh, beat his wife, he refuses. He has to kill his uh, 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 kind of the servant, but he refuses. Then he says, okay, just drink uh, for me uh, the wine. And when he drinks the wine, uh, his wife is angry with him, so he starts beating the wife. And the, when the servant uh, comes to uh, stop him, and he kills the servants because he does not have the senses in his control. So when, uh, when you see the uh, process of the mind, uh, the alcohol uh, 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 kind of inhibits uh, your uh, logic and then all inhibitions are uh, gone. So that is the reason the Buddha is saying not to uh, have that fifth precept result. But over here, I think the Buddha is talking about the basics. Uh, he could be uh, kind of uh, criticized uh, because if uh, over here he mentions alcohol, as one of the things which takes you to this thing. But alcohol in itself is not doing it. But alcohol, by drinking alcohol, you can go into the areas where it is that you may uh, do certain things which will break the precepts. So anyways, that's an interesting point. But after that, he is giving the uh, uh, another thing. Uh, that is, uh, one is full of longing. So the Buddha is also warning us that not to be too greedy in our uh, life. So one who is full of longing is, I want this, I want that, I want uh, the other thing. So one of the uh, stories Osho used to say, uh, tell about us, one uh, person is homeless. So somebody, uh, a very rich person says that uh, he sees this guy and he's very unhappy. So he says, okay, I'll give you a home. I have an empty house. You stay over there. When he stays in this empty house, he goes after some uh, time and uh, says that I have no furniture. Uh, uh, so I, it feels very odd to stay in this empty house. So the uh, uh, the person says, okay, I'll buy you the furniture. Then after buying the furniture, he asks for a, a cycle. At least I can go to the market to get my things. Then he gives him a cycle. Then he says, oh, the cycle has this problem and that problem. Give me a scooter. And So this story goes and on and on and says that uh, this is the same way the person is full of longing. One has to understand that we want the next and the next and the next. So one should not be full of longing, has a mind of ill will and intention of hate. So the one uh, thing uh, the Buddha is teaching is uh, that uh, uh, your thoughts are very powerful. So having the thoughts of ill will or hatred or cruelty can be very detrimental. That is the reason the Buddha is giving uh, the practice of metta to counter ill will. To counter cruelty, he is giving the uh, practice of uh, karuna. Then uh, he is giving uh, the uh, the practice of mudita to counter the uh, longing or uh, dissatisfaction which a person has. So when aversion is there, then he says that you have to practice equanimity. So this practice is the Buddha is giving to counter the mind's negative emotions. So we use our attention in a proper manner uh, to be in a wholesome mindset. So that is the reason six hours again come into play. So whenever your mind you see in the unwholesome, you release your attention from that. You don't try to suppress it, change it. You just release your attention, relax, re-smile and come back to a wholesome. 
and what is there you can do which is opposite to what is there so when there is a lot of lustful mind then he says you uh, put your mind on the unattractive so then uh, you can say if you are uh, attracted to sweet and you want a lot of sweet then you can say oh i can get diabetic uh, and then I may have so many problems with that. So you see the negative type. Uh, so to uh, kind of control your urges or a mind which is full of longing. So then the mind of ill will. One second. And intentions of hate can be countered by doing the practice of metta. Then holds wrong view and has an incorrect perspective thus. So wrong view is also very detrimental because on the eightfold path also, the Buddha starts with the right view. So he says that there is a right view. If you have right view, there is right intention. And there is right intention, there is right uh, communication or a speech. When there is a right speech, there is right action. When there is right action, there is right livelihood. When there is right livelihood, there is right practice. When there is right practice, then there is a right mindfulness. When there is right mindfulness, then there is right collectedness or concentration. So it also starts, eight four parts also starts with right view. Right view is a very important thing. But over here, the right view has been elaborated in a different manner because this is philosophical, because there are a lot of philosophies which are going on in the time of the Buddha. So there were philosophers like Nietzsche uh, in the time of the Buddha also, who kind of argued that, uh, and these are specific arguments, that is, there is nothing given. There is nothing given means when you are doing dana, there is no benefit because then there is no, uh, uh, if there is no benefit, then there is nothing given because there is no point of giving. So that is the philosophy which is there. Nothing offered, nothing sacrificed. So you cannot offer anything nor sacrifice anything. One of the highest mindsets of uh, doing the dana is that they do it as a sacrifice, as a yagna. And the, uh, higher than that, uh, the Buddha is giving a uh, mindset of giving it as a uh, uh, pirikara or uh, the requisite of the mind and alankara. Alankara means the beautification of the mind. So it is given as a means of enhancing our mind state. The dana is given. That is the highest dana. It can also take you to the uh, uh, anagami stage by giving the dana in that mind state. So, but the philosophy can be uh, that uh, there is nothing given, nothing offered, nothing sacrificed. So that is a wrong view, the Buddha is saying. There is no fruit or result of good or bad deeds. So the, now the Buddha is giving an example of also why uh, certain people can go into this understanding of there is no fruit of good or bad deeds. So this uh, understanding the Buddha is giving in uh, the Ganekaya, uh, the Sutta number one, Brahma Jala Sutta. So the Buddha is saying that some people may develop their psychic ability. But their psychic ability is limited. They can see somebody's uh, birth, somebody dying from here and being reborn. And they can see. So then they see a person who is very bad in his lifetime. But when he is dying, he is born in heaven. And then another person he sees, he is very good in his life. When he dies, he goes in hell. And then he uh, uh, gets a wrong idea that if you do good, you go to hell. If you do bad, you go to heaven. So there is no point in it. But uh, the Buddha is saying this is a very limited view. A Buddha is required to see in the broader perspective and seeing that this uh, is certain things which were uh, become fruitful. The causes and conditions were right for something which he had done in the past, uh, which was taking him to the next destination. But whatever he has done over here, in the future, he will get the benefit or the punishment for it. So that understanding uh, requires a Buddha to be there. That's the reason the importance of the Buddha is there. Because you can see in the broader perspective and give you the information. And the Buddha is saying that I am giving you the information which I see and know. I see for myself and know 
Only then I gave you that information. And that is the uh, promise of the Buddha. There is no this world or uh, there is no next world. Now there is no this world or there is next, no uh, next world is. This is the theory of uh, Elon Musk, which says that this is a simulation. We are all like computer parts in the some computer program, uh, which is happening in some other uh, higher civilization. And uh, we are not real. So this is not a real world. And certain times uh, there is philosophy that this is not a, a real world. There is another world which is real. After dying only, we will know what is the real world. Uh, this world is not real. Then there is a, another uh, philosophy which is like a, a philosophy of uh, uh, physicality, which says that we are born and uh, there is because of some uh, processes we are having this uh, life. And when we die, there is nothing which is there. So our body uh, is there. So uh, whatever is the fire element will go into the fire element. Whatever is in the earth element will go into the earth. What is water will go into water. What is air will go into the air. So there's the thing uh, which is there beyond that. So that is also uh, the philosophy which is saying that there is no next world. So that is the reason uh, Bhante Vimalramsi also saying that we should be very careful about philosophies. So what is the philosophy? Uh, is a thinking without action. But what the Buddha is uh, uh, talking about is uh, observation in our own mind, which is how this attention is going from uh, one thing to another, how this is impersonal, how this is creating dukkha, how it is uh, impermanent. So all those things which we are doing, we are doing it in our own observation, in our own understanding, in our own uh, uh, experience. Then it is not a just a thinking, thinking process. So thinking, thinking uh, process is the philosophy. Then there is no mother, no father. No mother, no father means that there is no requirement to honor the mother and father. Uh, Buddha gives a uh, very uh, elaborate instructions uh, that there is uh, 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 some things which you can do for your mothers and fathers to repay their uh, kind of uh, debt. And that uh, repaying of the debt is by taking them to the Dhamma, teaching them Dhamma and bringing them to the Dhamma. So that is one way of repaying their debt. But even if uh, like Sravan, there is one uh, character in India uh, which is uh, taking care of the uh, uh, the blind parents. That he takes them uh, on his shoulder and goes to the uh, different parts, uh, holy sites that he takes his mother and father. The Buddha says, even if you do that for a hundred years, you cannot repay your debt, which is your owed to your mother and father. So he is very uh, clear, Buddha is very clear that the uh, you owe a very big debt to your mother and father because being a human birth is very rare. And he gives examples for that also. So uh, the philosophy is that there is no mother, no father. There are no spontaneously born beings. Now, this uh, spontaneously born beings are uh, one way of uh, thinking of any deva uh, birth is they are born without any uh, womb. So they are spontaneously born. So if, they, if there is a hungry ghost, he is spontaneously born because there is no womb required for that. If a person is born in hell, he is spontaneously born. But you can see that in uh, our uh, surrounding also, in water, which is uh, there in a uh, kind of a bottle or something like that, you can see that there are worms or something will appear uh, in that bottle of water, which is uh, sealed, uh, or uh, just a water which is uh, uh, there in a jug or mug. There may be some beings which may. So that is also given as an example of spontaneous birth. They can be a spontaneous birth in the air, uh, as in germs can uh, be uh, born in the air. So uh, there are uh, in this life also, in this realm also, we can see there are spontaneous births. But this spontaneous birth maybe is basically uh, kind of indicating that the devas being born or the hell realms when you are born, that is not happening. So they are uh, refuting the reality. There are no recluses or brahmins who living rightly and practicing rightly, having known and realized for themselves this world and the hereafter, proclaim them. So the Buddha uh, is the one who is 
ascetic who uh, who is living rightly and practicing rightly, having directly known and realized for himself this world and the hereafter, he proclaims them. So the, uh, there is a philosophy. They are saying there is no uh, point in being a uh, sannyasi. There is no point in being a recluse. There is no point in being a brahmin. A brahmin is a very specific word, not a, a caste uh, uh, designation. Uh, the uh, a person who is uh, seeking the ultimate reality is a brahmin. So the Buddha is saying that uh, that is also a wrong view. So if you say that there is no brahmin, there are no recluses, there are no rightly practicing people, then what you are doing is you are not uh, stating the reality correctly. So that is also something uh, the Buddha says is in, uh, having the wrong view. And having the wrong view also will take you to the uh, uh, side which is of uh, crookedness. So there are no... Uh, so he creeps along by body, speech and mind and his uh, bodily uh, karma is crooked and his destination is crooked. So now I uh, this crooked word uh, which was there, I remembered uh, Sister Kema used to uh, give a poem uh, which was on crookedness. So I, I remembered that and I searched and I f actually found that man, uh, that poem. It is, uh, the there was a crooked man by Mother Goose. If you want, I'll give you that link also. So I remember Sister Kema because she used to uh, say uh, this poem a uh, lot to me. Uh, and she used to do that when we used to go to Malaysia, uh, where there is a Sri Lanka Buddhist temple. And uh, uh, opposite Sri Lanka Buddhist temple, there's a series of uh, buildings, which are crooked buildings, and no straight buildings. <laughs> For some reason, they have made it in a kind of modern style. So she used to read this poem. There was a crooked man, and he walked a crooked mile. He found a crooked head, uh, sixpence against a crooked style. He bought a crooked cat with a uh, which caught a crooked uh, mouse, and they all lived together in a little crooked house. <laughs> so, uh, so the concept of crookedness is also there in the modern time where it is uh, mentioned in this poem. So one uh, who is not doing the, uh, the karma, which is correct, or not having the right uh, view, can uh, become and go into the crooked ways. So that is what the Buddha is saying. So now the, the Buddha is giving a uh, example of the, uh, the positive sides, how uh, a person can uh, do uh, the karma, which is uh, correct. Students, beings are the owners of their karma, their heirs of their karma. They have karma as their origin, karma as their relative, karma as their resort. Whatever karma they do, good or bad, they are their, uh, uh, there are their its heirs. Here, having abandoned the destruction of life, someone abstains from the destruction of life with the rod and weapon laid aside. Contentious and kindly, he dwells compassionate towards all beings. He does not creep along by the body, speech and mind. So it uh, sounds very much like uh, doing the Brahma Vihara practice of Metta and Karuna. So a person who is following Metta and Karuna, this is how uh, we can look at it. One other uh, uh, thing about uh, uh, Mudita uh, and uh, Karuna, uh, the Buddha is giving an example is that every time when you see somebody who is in a very good position, so you were also there in this good position and you are also there. So if you are looking at wealth, then the richest person who is there in, in, in the world, uh, you were there as a, a richest person sometime in the past. If you see somebody who is in a very miserable position, so somebody in the war in uh, uh, Ukraine, uh, in, in the trenches. You are also there in the trenches in a war situation. So uh, the Buddha is saying that you have to be happy for the person who is good because uh, you are also there. So you should have mudita for that person and you have, have, have compassion for the person who is in a worse position than you because you were also there. So it is a, uh, everybody has been there in every other position. The Buddha says that we have been in all the situations which is possible in the world. 
So everybody has been a Brahma also. Everybody has been a wheel turning monarch also. And everybody has been in the worst of the hells also. So one should be having compassion for the people who are in the bad situation and have mudita for the people who are in good situation. His bodily kamma is straight. His verbal kamma is straight. His mental kamma is straight. His destination is straight. His rebirth is straight. But for one with a straight destination and rebirth, I say there is one of two destinations. Either the exclusively pleasant heavens or eminent families, such as those of affluent uh, Kshatriyas, uh, affluent Brahmins, or affluent householders, families that are rich with great wealth, property, abundant gold and silver, abundant treasures and belongings, abundant wealth and gain, sorry, grain. Thus, a, a being is reborn uh, from a being. One is reborn through one's deeds. When one has been reborn, contacts affect one. It is in this way, I say that beings are the heirs of the Kama. So the Buddha is giving an example of uh, being reborn in a, a very a good family also. And that is also a blessing because that is based on your Kamas and based on your good deeds that you are is reborn in a very good family. Having abandoned the taking of what is not given, Someone abstains from taking what is not given, abstains from sexual misconduct, abstains from false speech, abstains from divisive speech, abstains from harsh speech, abstains from ideal chatter, is without longing, is of goodwill, if, is full of metta, holds right view and has a correct uh, perspective thus. There is what is given. There is a, uh, in this world ascetics and brahmin of right conduct and right practice, who having realized this world and the other world for themselves by direct knowledge, make them known to others. He does not creep along by body, speech and mind. His bodily kamma is straight. His destination is straight. His rebirth is straight. Thus a being is reborn from a being. One is reborn through one's deeds. When one has been reborn, contact affects one. It is in this way I say that beings are heirs of their kamma. The Buddha is saying the same thing about the good destinations also. The good fortunes when you are uh, uh, experiencing, that is also ba based on your own karma. So it's a cause and effect thing. So nobody is bestowing uh, blessings on you and nobody is uh, bestowing punishments on you. Some uh, action which you have done in the past uh, results in the present as bad or good uh, results. And what you do in the present also can result in good or bad. When one has been reborn, context effect one. Can you explain? So uh, when a person, uh, uh, say a being is born. So uh, when a being is born, there are certain uh, contacts which is, he is coming into. It's like when we are born as human beings, we have six uh, contacts. We are uh, through the eye, nose, sorry, eye, ear, nose, tongue, body and mind. So that are the context which, uh, which is there. But for a uh, uh, hungry host, there are other contacts which are there. For a, uh, for a, uh, a person who is born in hell, it is exclusively a contact which is there is of painful contact. And somebody who is re uh, reborn in a, a, a say a Deva Loka, there are different Deva Lokas. So one of the Deva Lokas where there is exclusively uh, pleasurable feelings which are there you are experiencing uh, but there are certain devalokas there is uh, uh, actually very pleasurable uh, state but there are no other contacts pleasure is your uh, food so you consume uh, just the pleasure and then you are in the pleasure state but there is no movement of the mind the mind is very still there is no, no movement there are no other contacts there is only pleasurable contact is there so, uh, uh, and then there are uh, uh, states of mind, uh, like in a Brahma, there can be a lot of uh, uh, different contacts which uh, is possible. Uh, because uh, Brahma Loka, there is a lot of actions which are possible by the Brahma uh, beings. Then there are uh, other uh, uh, beings which are Arupa. Arupa will have a mental contact, but not have physical contact. Because uh, there is no body. So when you are born, uh, the uh, where you are born, the contacts are affected. And then there are situations also. Like uh, when you are born as a human being, 
then a heart attack is possible. Uh, accidental death is possible. When, when we are born as uh, a Deva Loka, there is heart attack, it's not possible. There is no accidental death which is possible over there. Uh, so there are situations which are there. They, uh, so a part of the human life is that the accident is there as a part of the human life, which is explained by the Buddha in one of the suttas where the Kamma and the result of Kamma is explained. So Buddha says that, say, if you are born uh, with a uh, expectancy of a long life, because if you are not killing in the past life, in this life you are born, you are born with a very long life. But you go and you uh, pass away uh, before your time. Then the rest of the time you are spending in the Deva Lokas. Uh, that remaining uh, Kamma is exhausted in the developers. So the Buddha is saying the possibility of the happenstance. So the possibility of happenstance is there in the human life because there is a lot of things which are happening over here. So there are certain things which are dependent on other uh, uh, people also. Like somebody, uh, like uh, Putin may uh, drop a, a nuclear bomb. I am just giving an example. And may kill uh, 10,000 people in that area. But now that not everybody deserves to die over there. <laughs> so the, the possibility is there because we are there in the human realm. That that may happen. So that is the possibilities of the our birth. So when you are born in hell, that is not possible. When you are born in heaven, that is not possible. So those scenarios will not come. So uh, in uh, hell, uh, the pleasurable uh, is uh, very uh, much not possible. In heaven, uh, the very much Painful is not possible. And because of the, those uh, things uh, also, where you are born, the contacts are uh, limited uh, in such a certain manner. So that is the importance of that statement. Students, beings are owners of their karma, the heirs of their karma. They have karma as their origin, karma as their relative, karma as their resort. Whatever karma they do, good or bad, they are their heirs. This students is the exposition on the Dhamma of Kriya. So this is how the Buddha is talking about the importance of your actions and being uh, aware of the actions. The Eightfold Path also start, starts with the right view. Because when uh, your perspective is uh, correct, then how you have an image of the reality, the image you have of the reality, uh, that uh, is uh, shaped. When that is shaped, then your communication with yourself and with others is shaped. When your communication is shaped, then what would happen is how your movement is happening, how your mind's movement happens from one thing to another. That is shaped. When that is shaped, then your lifestyle is shaped. When the lifestyle is shaped, then your practice is shaped. When the practice is shaped, then your observation is shaped. When you have a, a correct observation, then your mind is collected. So uh, uh, this uh, eightfold path which is there is also starting with the right view or right perspective. And that uh, having the right perspective is very important. So certain times the Buddha used to go with the least important to the most important. And certain times the Buddha used to go from the most important to the uh, least important. So in this manner, we can see that over here, the Buddha is giving the view, right view as the last uh, aspect. But that is very important. That is the most important aspect which is there. And once uh, a person understands that uh, whatever they do, they are doing it through a lens, it is not a default. And you cannot say that I have uh, no view on this uh, subject. Having no view is a, a view point. So you cannot say that I am uh, wearing a, uh, 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 spectacles. That is the reason I have uh, a uh, lens. But if I remove this also, my eyes has lens. So without lens, I cannot see. This may be an artificial lens, but uh, then there is an uh, actual lens also. But there, uh, you cannot say that without lens, I am seeing. Just because you don't have a spectacles. You have different uh, lenses. Biological lenses you have. So that is how the Buddha is saying that the view is very important. The uh, actions is shaped by the view because when you have, uh, first you will have a perspective. When the perspective is there, then the intentions are formed. The thoughts are formed. When the thoughts are there, that is what we speak about. Oh, we want to go to vacation. We will go to vacation over there. 
So we are uh, thinking about the vacation, then we talk about vacation, then we say plan something, and then our actions will take us to that vacation spot. So it starts with a thing. And that is a perspective that vacations are good. <laughs> Again, there are uh, old school people who say that no, vacations are not good. Then they never go on vacations. So uh, then that does also starts with the right view or, or a view point. So everything starts with a viewpoint and your actions are, your intentions are very important in your actions. So have a, a right intention and then you will have right communication and right actions. And that is how uh, you can also follow the eight pole path and the follow the uh, teaching of the Buddha. So is there any questions in this? Any questions related to this sutta? Yes. No, it is very interesting. Very, very good. Uh, no, I, I, I did not hear you. It was very interesting talk, Monday. It was very, very, okay. very knowledgeable. Thank okay, you. thank you. So, uh, if you want to ask anything about other the other topic also, you can uh, ask. Uh, maybe uh, next time or next week, whenever you come, we can, we can pick up some suttas about karma. Ah, Just karma, yes. That is very uh, good. I'll see. I, I, that is a good uh, thing. Uh, the suggestions will help me because uh, I certain times uh, cannot decide what to do. So, uh, okay. yes, the Kama is one of the things I wanted to take about uh, Majjhvanika. There's one very good sutta. Uh, the actions and how the results of actions are there. So, it is very uh, much uh, giving. Uh, and the book Bhante Vimbalamsi, our teacher also used to uh, refer to that sutta. That uh, uh, sutta I would like to uh, maybe I have done in the past, but I'll uh, do it again also because uh, what happens is my perspective also changes on uh, things and uh, everything is impermanent. So that is a point in time uh, reference. So maybe I'll take uh, next time uh, that sutta. So is there any other questions related to any other thing, topics? If not, then we can uh, share the merits. Okay. No questions then. Okay. So they will share the merits. May suffering once be suffering free and the fear struck fearless be. May the grieving shed all grief and may all beings find relief. May all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nagas of mighty power share this merit of ours. May they long protect the Buddha's dispensation. Thank you, everybody, for coming. And uh, hopefully, we'll. Uh, Thank, we'll you, Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Bhante. Yes. Uh, Thank you, Chaya.